Sports now joining us on Talk Sport is Fight Night presenter Gareth A. Davies. Hello, Gareth. How are you? Good afternoon, Darren, Andy, and Mr. Oliver. Good afternoon, Gareth. Good afternoon, Gareth. Nearly the right order. I should be top of that list, but it doesn't matter. Um, Now, listen, Gareth, with everything that you know about the news that's broken uh, over the last 24 hours, in your opinion, do you think this fight should take place on Saturday? No, not at the moment. I really don't. It's a huge stain on boxing if it does go ahead. We just heard from Conor Ben. Obviously, he hasn't been suspended. And, you know, above the line, of course, he can go ahead. But the Boxing Board of Control won't be sanctioning it. They could go to Malta, Luxembourg, different organisations, which would make it an unlicensed bout in the UK. But it's sports suicide for me in many ways, because it would only take something to happen to Chris Eubank Jr. for the sport to be thrown into a horrible, horrible place with no lifeline. And secondarily, you need to get to the bottom of it when someone tests positive for a banned PD that puts testosterone into your body because this isn't tiddlywinks or darts or even football. This is a sport where you can be yeah. legally killed in the ring. So that's why it should be postponed with an investigation. And then we see what goes from there. Gareth, you spoke about it there that they potentially could go and get a, a boxing licence from Luxembourg. Um, but not so much Chris Eubank Jr. because he's not committed any anything wrong in this fight. But for Conor Ben going forward then, could we see him potentially never box in this country again? No, I mean, I think if, if there's an inquiry that, I, I don't know if you've discussed this already, but um, UCAD and VADA are two separate testing bodies and that the Boxing Board of Control goes by UCAD, UK anti-doping mm. tests, and hasn't tested positive with them, mm. just with VADA, the Voluntary Anti-Doping uh, Association, which is what both men have decided to sign up to as an ancillary um, anti-doping process coming into this fight. It doesn't mean the boxing board can take action, have an inquiry and look at samples and all those kind of things and do their own investigation um, and make a decision based on that. But but ultimately, they read off UCAD and he hasn't done anything wrong with UCAD's tests. But maybe UCAD don't test for that drug. Um, it's a very, very complex and grey area. But I don't think it'll be banned from boxing forever. Um, are you saying if they go ahead with so, the fight so, under a... So, what, you know, so, Gareth, what we're saying was, so what is the reason really, for, like, if the Boxing Board of Control are happy with the UCAD situation, we, we, I know that they're, they're the main drug testers for the British Boxing Board of Control. VADA was the voluntary one. Why have the Boxing Board decided to pull out if they're happy with UCAD, just because this UCAD, uh, the VADA thing is as rose? No, they are taking the right decision, which is if this boxer has a banned substance in his system that's been shown up by VADA, they have concerns about it. Mm -hmm. They haven't suspended him. Um, They may do so. I mean, they may be left the door open. I mean, I... They've just decided they don't want any part of it, basically. Of the the event. Of the event. Yeah, exactly. And, And you can understand them being that way. Spencer, you know the boxing board as well as I do. We've Absolutely. been around 30 odd years. They're very slow to move. Um, mm. And they would have taken that decision based on on a lot of things um, and a lot of paperwork and a lot of legalese. And, you know, I'm hearing this has been floating around potentially for a few days now. And these tests, as, well, as it's emerging, go back to August and September. So it's mm. not like they weren't aware of it. The statement came out very quickly joint statement from Wasserman Boxing and Matchroom Boxing earlier. It's almost as if they were ready to have the statement go out if this did come out, because they have obviously been arguing the toss behind closed doors with the Boxing Board of Control. I think it's all in the hands of lawyers right now as to whether, is it restraint of trade for Conor Ben to carry on? How, what are the legal ramifications? I repeat, it is an inherently dangerous sport. Mm-hmm. I'm talking to a man who had a brain hemorrhage, whose mm-hmm. fight I covered, who just survived, who's a wonderful, beautiful human being I love. But you imagine if the man you'd fought, Sergei Devakov, had been on testosterone. Sure. We'd be looking at a murder trial, or attempted well, murder trial. Well, Gareth, this is what I wanted to say. Do you think that this fight, if it does go ahead now, the way that it's been, you know, tarnished with these accusations for Conor Ben, you know, failing this test, etc. Do you think that it puts boxing into disrepute if this sport goes ahead? And how damaging also, question I wanted to ask you, do you think it is for Conor Ben if this if this fight goes ahead with everything that's surrounding it? Because, I mean, it puts us in a bad place because everything was in Conor Ben's favour with 
Eubank having to make a weight he hadn't had since he was eight, uh, hadn't made since he was eighteen years of age. One five seven, and and I know better than anyone. Dropping those last couple of pounds when you're tight at a weight is dangerous, right? So he was doing that. Then he had that re- rehydration clause that was put in place where he couldn't rehydrate the way that he should have, so that would still keep his strength down as well. And then if Connor Ben has been taking his substance, I mean, what, what, what does that say for the sport? Well, you asked me three questions then and you answered all three of them and I'll answer them as well. But, you know, you and I have this kind of back and forth, don't we? Sure. Um, look, the, the, does it, what does it do for Conor Ben? Well, he came and spoke just now. We heard him. He, he came out and he's faced up and he's manned up in that way. If it's proven, he's got the right to redress. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're innocent until proven guilty. He's got the opportunity to challenge the B sample. Um, the B sample is out there somewhere. They always take it. We never really get to hear about the B sample very often uh, in these situ- situations. Um, look, the fight is tainted right now. It's clearly tainted because of this adverse finding, this this uh, this metabolite, this trace of, of this. Uh, fertility drug for women that creates testosterone in men, and that's why it's banned. Okay. Um, the, 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 the point is, the fight, in my view, the fight can't go ahead until A, it's been tested again, uh, and B, it's proven that he hasn't taken something. If he has taken something, he gets a ban. It's mm. as simple as that. Um, but if the fight goes ahead at the moment, boxing puts itself in a risky place. I, I, like all of you, I've had thousands or hundreds of people getting in contact today saying, I don't want to see the fight now, or why is it going ahead now? I'm so excited about this, and I feel deflated. Now, I do. I mean, I'm sure you do. It's sure. it's one of those fights. I went to the red carpet event on Monday, and it just feels so amazing to have a red carpet event for an event in the UK. That's It has a Las Vegas feel to it. All the celebs and young influencers, influencers were there. The two men themselves are spectacular human beings. And now we've got it tainted and you can't get away from it. This is what has happened. You know, that there, there, a positive test has been found and something needs to be done okay. about it. Uh, Gareth, listen, we, uh, we could talk boxing all day. In fact, we're going to, but we're going to have to let you go now. But I appreciate your time. Thanks so much for coming Cheers, on. Cheers, Gareth. Pleasure, Cheers, Pleasure. mate. There you go, final presenter, Gareth A. Davies.